Thank you. Today we are gathered in our Veterans Day Assembly Program to recognize and honor the men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. So what I need for you to do as a student body is to be respectful, listen, and remember that you are a representative of West McDowell Middle School. So at this time, I need everyone to stand. Thank you. 
battlecross, the fallen soldier's battlecross is a symbolic cross placed on the battlefield, made up of soldier's rifle with the bayonet attached stuck into the ground, helmet on top, dog tags hanging from the rifle, and the boots of the fallen soldier. Its purpose is to show honor and respect from the fallen. The practice started during the Civil War as a means of identifying the bodies on the battlefield. Today, it may seem in the field or at the base camp as part of a ceremony to mourn, similar to attending a funeral, as this is typically not possible for soldiers still in the fight. The box represents the grave of the fallen soldier. rifle with a bayonet is inserted into the box to represent the weapon used to protect a soldier's country so his country could be safe. on top of the rifle and dog tags hanging from the rifle to identify the fallen body. Showing appreciation to our ROTC and what they are doing as they begin to serve our country. sharing a poem and one a speech with us. Ladies. <coughs> My name is Kirsten Bragg and I'm the president of Western Bell Middle School. 
Welcome to today's ceremony and thank you all for attending. I'm honored to be speaking with you on such an important occasion. We're here today to honor our service members and to remember their achievements, their courage, and their dedication. Also, to say thank you for the sacrifices they made for our country and the courage it takes to defend our country. These people possess courage, pride, determination, integrity, selflessness, dedication, and much more. Tomorrow, as people throughout the country will gather together to remember, to honor, and to pay gratitude to those who have served our country. We should be proud to be part of this every day, but especially today. I am proud I had the opportunity to be served by these great men and women. On Veterans Day, I encourage you to think about the millions of men and women in uniform that go the extra mile each day. On this day, we will honor our heroes of past, present, and tomorrow. A special place in all our lives, but still I keep on wondering why. Why risk your life for strangers at home? Why risk it all for thousands you don't know? These are questions often asked. They fight for our rights as Americans to ask. All soldiers young and soldiers old, they fought for our freedom, brave and bold. Sometimes we see them on our shores, others fight a foreign war. Each soldier knows what is at stake. The risk is great, there's no mistake. They keep our strong freedom alive in a world where it's tough to survive. Their deeds keep this nation's alive, all who have been marked in our past. Honor each with love and respect, take time to remember, never forget. Show thankfulness when hard to spare, they stand for us.
holding your head not straight in front of you. You understand that? Yes, sir. Fifth grade, stand up. Do not talk, stand up. I am challenging you, fifth grade. This is fifth grade only. Stay on your feet, fifth grade. Stay on your feet, stand up. I'm sorry, sixth grade. Oh. Hey, I'm about to choke you. Just not get choked. Sixth grade. Sixth grade, stand up and listen. I am giving you a direct order. Your direct order is honor. There are three values that we're looking at. Honor. You are going to be the people that I'm going to look to. Me and Seth are all already have this planned out. And the other veterans in this room already have this planned out. We are going to check on you. Your job is to bring honor to West Middle School. You understand? In doing so, you need to do what the teachers tell you to. You need to be mindful of everything that you say and do. You understand? Yes, sir. Bring honor. That is your mission from now until you leave this world. Bring honor to West Middle. Bring honor to McDowell community. Bring honor to your nation. Sit. Seventh grade on your feet. Do not talk. Courage. Your mission is courage, seventh grade. That means doing the right thing. Even if you have to stand alone, you do the right thing. You understand? Yes, sir. Have the courage to try that math that is extremely difficult. Have the courage not to join in on foolishness. Have the courage to be friends to others. Have the courage to do what is right. Do you understand that? That is your yes. Born at Gert, 
with a broken family, according to, to statistics I've spoke to me where it was arrested a fuck felon in my area had been, which is in prison. But my mother beat the black off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I claimed that I was dark skinned fellow, but she looked as I was a little bit lighter But she stayed on me, and I listened to my teachers, and they taught me all these things. So many, so many things that they taught me, and I listened to them, and I'm successful because of it. You can do anything if you set your mind to it. Too many of us, being the veterans and teachers, have stood for you to make sure that you have a way. Freedom is not free. All these people serve. 41,892,128 people have served so that you can sit where you sit. You understand that? Sir. So my challenge to you is remember honor, courage, commitment, those things in each grade level. We're going to check on you. Sixth grade, you need to be honorable. Seventh grade, courage. Eighth grade, commitment. That is what you need to focus on. Be courageous when no others are. You understand? Too many people have died. This morning I got up because of, uh, it takes a while to be able to get in this uniform. So uh, I got up in a grand because uh, I'm one pound heavier than I was when I was in Marine Corps, but it took me 30 pounds to get back into this uniform. <laughs> so this morning I got up at 3 and I, I was a, uh, got up and I, I took out the door. When I tell you I'm from here, my, the man that raised me died of, a few uh, days ago, and then my wife's father died in uh, December. They're both uh, both great people, but my wife's uh, dad was a Marine, and then uh, my whole family's all military. So I got up this morning because I'm motivated. It's the Marine Corps birthday, and I believe in everybody in here, and I know these veterans believe in our nation, and I love this country. So I got up this morning, and I told the students I was going to run, and I don't run, I don't exercise, none of that stuff. So I got up, and I took off. And uh, I did the same route that the man that uh, we just buried on a Monday. When I signed up for Marine Corps in the 11th grade, and he told me to start training. So for a year, I trained. And so I ran that exact same route this morning. People love you, and they believe in you. Don't forget. So I went to his grave, the, the dirt. Is just thrown on there, still fresh. And I went to his grave this morning. I got down on my knees and I prayed that um, God give me the strength to be able to continue to be a leader in this county and a leader for you all. And I don't do so lightly, and I don't expect you to do so lightly. So when I was telling you to stand, you better stand every time. You understand? You stand and you do the right thing because there is no excuse. I could have had every excuse in the world to be set behind bars. I could have every excuse to be nothing. But people made me stand and taught me to stand and that's what I'm expecting you. So now I'm going to ask everyone in this building to stand. We live in the greatest nation on this earth.
and the honor to go forward. Staff Sergeant Aulis also attended school in McDowell County. He attended West Middle, graduated from McDowell High School in the year 2000. He joined the Army in 2001. He has been stationed in Korea, Louisiana, Kansas, New Jersey, South Carolina. He has been deployed to Iraq three times and Afghanistan once. He has been recognized with the Bronze Star, the Joint Service Achievement, two Army Commendation Medals, five Army Achievement Medals, the Human Service Medal, two Purple Hearts, Combat Action Badge, the Presidential United Unit Citation, two Valorous Unit Citations, one Meritorious Citation, and for 15 years he has received the President's Physical Fitness Award. While in the Army, he has received two degrees and he has currently a bride wife that is stationed also serving her country in Egypt. Please welcome Staff Sergeant Chris Aulis. Sitting to my right over here. Um, 
And I didn't realize that growing up. Growing up, I literally took everything for granted. Uh, I thought that I could wake up every day, go out and play with my neighbors and play with my brother and play sports, and I could act a fool and be immature because it didn't affect anybody, but it does. And I'll tell you how it affects us because what we do is we put all of you all before ourselves, and we take that oath, and we don't take it lightly. Um, we decide that every day, no matter what, the lives of these young ladies in front of me, or these gentlemen over here, or these young adults over here, or over here, are more important than myself. Um, it is a very few percent, less than one percent, of people in our nation serve in our military. Um, and it's not from a lack of trying. Some people just aren't qualified uh, based off of health, uh, based off the fact that they made some poor decisions growing up, um, and they got in a little bit of trouble. However, the ones that do serve, these ladies and gentlemen to my right and the gentlemen behind me, they deserve all the thanks in the world. They, they put themselves way before everything else uh, with time gone. And yesterday I was a part of another Veterans Day ceremony where I got the pleasure and the honor of meeting someone. How many people over here to my right were Vietnam veterans? So the Vietnam veterans of this country are amazing, let me tell you, because they still sit here today just as proud to be veterans, and yet they were treated so badly when they returned. Um, and that amazes me because what young people in this generation and other adults don't know is when we take those oaths to put on these uniforms, we do that not for glory, definitely not for a paycheck, um, but we do that because we care. And when we do that, we don't have a choice with what we do. We follow the orders of the men and women appointed over us, officers, leaders, the President of the United States, and we just execute. Now, we do get some say so in how we execute. However, these gentlemen to my right that served in Vietnam, they didn't get a choice as to whether or not they wanted to go over there. Their country called on them, and they said, gladly, I will do that. They said, send me, I will do that. And I will do that for you, so that these younger generations don't have to continue to fight those wars the rest of their lives. Um, and to that, uh, with this year being the 50th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War, I say thank you. And we owe all these gentlemen a round of applause. those who have protected and give you that right. Originally, 
Veterans Day, as I talked to some of the pastors this morning, was known as Armistice Day. If you didn't know that, take note. It's important. Uh, this day was conceived as a tribute to Americans who sacrificed their lives during World War I. Now, I know that there's not any veterans of World War I in this room today. Um, and I don't even know how many are still living today. Um, but we honor all those veterans that served in that war as well. Before or after World War I, because they fought to defend democracy also. We honor our veterans from every time of peace as well, for they protect what our war veterans fought and died to defend. We celebrate this day, we honor veterans today, because we know that without them, there would be no land of the free. Without the veterans of the American Revolution, there would not even be the United States of America. Without the veterans of the Civil War who fought on either side of what they believed in, the strong, united America we know today might not exist. Without the World War II veterans, do we have any World War II veterans in the room today? We might be living in a country or in a world where freedom of choice and the right to vote no longer exists. And without those currently fighting the war on terrorism, we would be living in constant fear of flying on an airplane or riding on a train or going to school. But you don't know who's gonna walk through your front door and what those rains do. All of our veterans have protected the democracy that we call home, our freedom and our way of life. Today we honor and we thank them, and tomorrow we must continue to honor them. They have given us the chance to live in freedom today and an opportunity to look forward to tomorrow. They have given us every day, and they have protected every freedom that we share. We must honor them every day in every way that we can. And the best way to honor our veterans is to take an active part in maintaining freedom in America. We must teach future generations about what it means be in America. The sacrifices made, the volunteers that it takes to build and make a strong community, what it takes to take care of our veterans and their families, to vote in elections, and continue to try to make America the very best that it can be on a daily basis. Without our veterans, we wouldn't be where we are today. We've got veterans that two days ago were elected to the Senate, to Congress, veterans that were elected as sheriffs across the nation, elected to school boards, all because they chose to serve and they got a little bit more discipline, they learned a little bit more respect for people and this nation, and they wanted to make something of themselves. So today, we say thank you to veterans, and we say thank you to you all for honoring us as veterans. May God bless you all and the United States. I want to leave you with just a couple more things. First off, people don't understand, especially in part this past decade and the past couple of days, is that we're not just a book or a constitution. We're not just a flag and we're not just one man. We are a nation, we are a team, and we're willing to volunteer and stand up for what's right, and that's what it takes to be this nation. And no matter what, no matter what people want to try to destroy us or break us apart, in a thousand years, we will still be here today because nothing's stronger than the heart of a volunteer. So last thing, what is a veteran? A veteran, whether active duty, discharged, retired, or reserve, is someone who, at one point in his or her life, wrote a blank check, made payable to the United States of America for an amount of up to and including his or her life. That is an honor, and there are way too many people in this country today who no longer understand that fact. We thank veterans such as Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone, United States Marine Corps. 
who is the only recipient of a Medal of Honor to go back into combat and die in combat. We thank veterans from every branch of service. And I thank you for allowing me to be here and speak with you today. Thank you. 
Still does with their friends who are honoring us with these other Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. from the high school, they did an outstanding job. I'm not sure if any of them are left, but let's give them a loud enough applause and they can hear from here. Dismiss now, but we're going to do it in an orderly fashion, beginning with the chorus. Chorus, if you'll head out. The chorus out there. 